But I really believe, you know, this evening, as we have come together, we are really going to experience something amazing. And so, everyone, you know, everyone, just be ready, be ready, because something is going to happen in this place and in your hearts tonight. And so, yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so this moment is God's dream. Uh, each one of you is God's dream. Uh, this is no ordinary night. And I'm not saying it because we're here, but this is God's appointed time. All right, the King is here in our midst, the King of Kings, and we're here to worship Him. And what a joy to see all of you, so many young people. Yeah, so let's, let's do this together, you know. Let's give what is due to Him, and that is our worship. Yeah? <clears throat> Maybe you can greet your friend standing next to you. Once Hi. more. Hi. Good evening. Hey. Yeah. How have you been? Yeah. And, and, and say hi to us too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi. Back to you. Good God, His name is Jesus. Oh, sweet. 
with you tonight and it all begins with a step of faith just free yourself because you are free I'm here to declare that you are free and you are free to worship and there are no limitations and there is no one stopping you from worship hallelujah and when you begin to praise then his presence fill this place and you begin to have an encounter with him and I know that God wants to meet you tonight but it all begins when you hear your own voice being sung when you hear your own heart your own voice being lifted in this place hallelujah so can we just take a step of faith and at a count of three can we shout hallelujah and fill this entire place one two three hallelujah
after me, okay? You ready? You ready? Sing as loud as you can. It goes something like this. Come on. Sing. Louder. Oh, 
thinking the best for you and me. Amen. Why don't we just shout one more time. You are good, Lord. You are good. We can do better than that. Come on, louder.
we can just declare this over our town. We can declare this over our family members, our family, our society this evening. Come on. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord? Oh my. Declare it, come on. Who can stop the Lord? He's mighty. Come on. Who can stop? He's unstoppable. He's powerful.
We're gonna dance the dance of victory tonight. Children of God, oh no more, not anymore, not today, devil, and never again. We're gonna dance the dance of victory. Everybody there, if you're not comfortable, come down. We're gonna dance the dance of victory. No matter how crazy it looks like, no matter how wild it looks like, let's get up in the fight for Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, everybody, children of God. So we, as your redeemed people, we as your children, God, give us the boldness, the boldness. This is the sound of the redeemed. This is the sound of this generation. And for generations to come, and I will sing because my father told me to sing. I will sing because my father sings over me. And I will dance because my father is dancing over me. And nobody can steal that from me. Thank you, Jesus.
This is the sound of hope returning. All your children coming home. We can hear the sound of heaven singing over us. This is the sound of hope returning. All your children, they're coming home. We can hear the sound. Sing. 
that a time is coming and now it has come when true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. of our hearts he wants to do so much but he's also waiting for the readiness of your hearts would you just yield would you just surrender
We've come to join the songs Sung long before our lives To raise our voice alone Heaven and earth alive We've seen your faithful hand Your mercy wear out and A king who bled and died Oh God who sighs, cries The intro a thousand generations you are worthy Lord of all unto you the slave is and king who left a voice with heaven singing worthy Lord of all life we lead and on to eternity our endless praise will cry Jesus be glorified and all through this life Of a thousand generations. 
presence in our midst. Hallelujah. We want to spend some time listening to the word of God. And we're so honored to have someone in our midst. He is a father to many, a spiritual father to many. And I'd really look up to this man. I'd really honor him. And it's such a joy for me. That he's in our midst. And so I would like to give this time to the senior pastor of Faith Harvest Church, Pastor Sean Kikong, to bring, to bring the word to us. And whoever is just standing right in the middle, you know, I want to encourage you. I know it's not the most convenient place. It's dusty down there, but I would like you to maybe just sit down right there. Thanks, Tali, for just this time to be able to share to the people gathered here. You know, while I was praying just a few minutes back, I just saw this picture. It was almost like half of the crowd here, your minds were bound with some chains. And the other half was getting into the flow of what the Spirit of God was doing. And the Holy Spirit gave me this understanding that there are many of you, you're trying to engage with what is happening in this evening service with your mind. You're trying to decide whether you like the songs, whether uh, you like the atmosphere. You are too consumed with who is here, who is not here, who's wearing what, who's not wearing what. And your mind is a hindrance to you to entering into the presence of God here. While the other half was really connecting with God in the spirit. See, there is no way you can connect with God from your mind. If you can find God with your mind, then you can find God in all the best universities in this planet. But you will find God in humble homes. You will find God in the hearts of people who may not know all the intellectual things that people expect you to know, but yet in the heart they have faith. Because it's really through the heart, through your passion, through your hunger that you connect with God, not through your mind. So I want to encourage those of you who are still on the fringes where your mind is bound with so many things, distractions this evening, to let go and to really from your heart in humility connect with God. See, today is Palm Sunday. That first Palm Sunday over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, many, many people missed the divine moment from God. Jesus himself with sorrow crying said, if you had known this day was a day of your visitation, then you would have been able to accept the grace, the blessing that God has for Israel and God would have saved that nation. Now they could not accept him because they were trying to understand in their intellect how this man who is a carpenter born of Joseph and Mary in a scandal born out of wedlock could be their Messiah, could be the one who sits on the throne of David. And so they rejected him. In other words, their minds were shielded from the truth. So my prayer is that tonight your minds will not be shielded from the truth. Your spiritual eyes will be open. And even in this place, which may not be the most comfortable place, you will experience God. You will encounter God. And you will go out of this place touched, impacted, different than the way you came. Shall we all stand to our feet?
Come, let's just open up our hearts to the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's just worship Him. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. From your heart. You don't have to feel anything. You don't have to see anything. You don't have to have any atmosphere around you. It's from your heart. By faith. Begin to worship Jesus because He's worthy. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can we do that for one minute? Come on, everyone. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Jesus, we magnify you because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. There is no God like you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And Father, I pray in this very place that every mind that is bound by tradition, every mind that is bound by, by the flesh, by the distractions, Father, that those minds be set free in Jesus' name. I release freedom over this place, O oh Lord, O oh God. Let your presence and your power minister to your people tonight, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm just going to share a couple of verses. I'm not really going to preach. First, from the book of Revelations, chapter 5. I'm just feeling led to just share a couple of scriptures and then we just go into a time of prayer. Revelations 5, verse 8. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have been redeemed and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying, now look at it very carefully. John says, I heard every creature. That means the dogs and the birds and the cats were also shouting, not just the human beings. Every creature, every grasshopper, amen. I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. This is a picture of true worship that we see in heaven. And I believe it is written here because God wants us to get a glimpse of what worship in heaven is looks like now Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 6 pray in this manner let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven now I believe that God wants us to see this picture of worship so that we will duplicate it here on the earth see you don't have to wait to get to heaven to worship with the angels in fact, you can do this tonight right here in this place. And angels will come and worship with us. Can you say amen? amen? Now, the picture of worship that we see in heaven is amazing because the Bible is careful to mention that it is out of every tribe and tongue. It is 10,000 of 10,000. That means it is millions of people before the throne room of God. And here... Not a single denomination is mentioned. 
It doesn't say the Baptists were there, the Revivalists were there, the Catholics were there. You know, it doesn't say this church was there and this church was there. See, when we are here on the earth, we are so consumed with, with these things. Which church is participating? Which pastor is here? And we are so conscious of our affiliations, denomination, and church-wise that we are uncomfortable to worship with one another. But that's a very sad and pitiable state. Because in heaven, God is not recognizing us through denominations. It is by our simple faith in Christ. And it says, out of every tribe and nation. That means everyone who believes from every continent, from every nation and every tribe, they are there before the throne. See, there's something powerful about worship. Worship is powerful in so many aspects. It gives freedom. It brings the presence of God. But one of the things that really blesses my heart to know is that worship really has a unifying effect. Worship is like uh, chumbuk. You know what chumbuk is? Magnet. You know, it draws the hearts of people to God. And it draws the heart of people to one another. And you know why? Because when we talk about worship, it is not about ministries. It is not about... Um, you know, um, beliefs and doctrines. See, one of the reasons why we are so divided among ourselves is because we are so conscious of our doctrines. We're so conscious of our heritage. We're so conscious of those names that we carry with so much uh, fervor here, but it doesn't have any relevance in the kingdom of God. But the worship, worship is all about Jesus. That's the beautiful thing. See, worship is not about um, denomination. It's about Jesus. And that's why you see, even here on the earth, how genuine worship has a unifying effect. You know, there are churches on this earth today who would never agree with the doctrine of Hillsongs. They would never invite the pastor of Hillsongs to their church. But the churches sing the song of Hillsongs. It's very funny. There are pastors that I know who would never invite Bill Johnson to the church to preach. But they will sing the songs from Bethel. Why? Because worship, genuine worship, songs, lyrics that lift up the, the greatness of Jesus, that lift up Jesus in all His splendor and glory, no one has any Criticisms towards that. No one has any objections. Anyone has any objections to Jesus? No. See, it doesn't matter where, whether this song comes from this group which uh, believes you don't agree with, whether it's the Charismatics, Pentecostals, or the traditional or the Catholic, whether the songs come from them, as long as it is a song that lifts up Jesus, magnifies Jesus, the body of Christ is willing to sing that. See, worship is so powerful because it unifies. And why it does that is because when we lift up Jesus, there's a verse in Colossians chapter 1, I believe it's verse 16 or 17, which says, in Him, in Christ, all things consist. That means everything, the whole universe is held in Christ, is created by Christ. So in him, if you go into science and you understand all the different neurons and atoms and the little things, I don't know the technical matters, you will find that what holds everything together is Christ. And in him, all things consist. All things are brought together in Christ. All things are held together in Christ. Not just churches, not just people, but even nature itself, creation itself, the planet itself, the universe itself, the sun, the moon, and the stars, all of them are held together in Christ. What is keeping this universe functioning like clockwork is Christ. What is keeping nature functioning like clockwork is Christ. And so, Christ is like a magnet that holds all things together. So when the body of Christ, when different churches, people from different groups come together and we worship and we lift up Christ, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of His people. The presence of God comes and manifests over this place. And when that happens is that the presence of Christ draws our hearts together. 
The presence of God draws the body of Christ together. So it is not in trying to be united that we will be united. It is not in everyone taking one name, one denominational name, that there will be unity in the body. That's why now there's, I'm not so bothered about different denominations, because I know we will always have denominations as long as we are on the earth. In fact, it doesn't bother me even if there are 10 new denominations that come out. Don't be so concerned about denominations because they are there for a purpose. Don't be so concerned about new churches starting. They will keep on starting. New independent churches will keep on starting all over the planet, including Kohima, and maybe even in your village in the coming days. Don't be so concerned about those things. As long as they preach Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. You see, what I'm trying to say is this. The real unity that we long for and we seek in the body doesn't come from the banner of a denomination, the banner of a ministry, or the banner of any ministry. Whether it is Billy Graham or whether it is Benin, it doesn't come through that. It comes only through the name of Christ. So when you and I are not looking to our differences, we're not looking to whatever camp we belong to, but we are simply looking to Christ when we are focused on Him, and that happens in the purity of worship, in the purity of prayer, when we are just looking to Christ, what happens? The presence of Christ draws us all into a oneness, into a unity, and that is the place where we will experience that oneness, that unity that we long for in the body of Christ. And that's why worship is so powerful. One place where different churches, different ministries, different camps, denominations in a city, in a region can come together without being insecure, without being threatened, is really in the place of worship and prayer. And you cannot separate the two because even here you see that they were having the harps and they were having the incense. Harp and the incense. The harp is worship, incense is prayer. They're always connected in the scriptures. So when we are worshiping, we're going to be praying. When we are praying, it's worship. They're both the same. And I believe that's what's happening in a very humble manner here tonight as we are worshiping. The presence of God is drawing our hearts to Christ, but also towards a unity of the body. So we don't want you to be feeling left out where you're all at the back by yourself, feeling like you are not a part of what's happening here. Maybe towards the end, when we come together to worship again, that all of us will come together as one. Let me show you another portion of Scripture. Turn to Acts chapter 16. There is no particular message tonight. I'm just sharing different scriptures. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Now, we know this story. Paul and Silas were at Philippi. They were arrested. They were beaten. They were bleeding. They were hurting, they were in pain, their feet were bound in stocks, and there they are in the dungeons. It's not like the luxury hotels of today's prison. In those days, the dungeons were really, really terrible. So they were bound in a prison. I'm sharing this because I sense that there are some of you who are bound here tonight. Not many of you are here because you really want God. Some of you are here just because you want to get a kick out of coming here. So some of you are bound. Bound in alcohol, bound in fear. Some of you are just bound in guilt and condemnation. So you may not be in a prison, but you are in an internal prison. You are in a mental prison. You are bound in a spiritual prison. Many of you are bound. You know that. On the outside you are happy, but on the inside you are very, very unhappy. Very, very confused about your life. So worship has the power to change that circumstance in your life. So Paul and Silas are here in prison. And instead of complaining and grumbling, instead of crying and whining, as most of us would have done, in the middle of the night, they are singing and praising God. 
And I'm sure it was not a whining song. <laughs> it was a loud song because the other prisoners were woken up and they were listening. So Paul was doing the tenor and Silas was doing the bass. I don't know. But they were sounding pretty good. They were praising God. They were singing praises to the Lord in the midst of the pain, in the midst of being bound. And that's what God wants you to do tonight. Some of you are bound in alcohol and some of you are bound in other things, uh, maybe tobacco or fear or even sexual addictions. But in the midst of your pain, before even you are free, God is telling you, begin to praise me, begin to worship me, begin to lift my name up. Because when you do that, something powerful will happen. And what happens here? Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were loosed and everyone's chains were loosed. I like to imagine it this way. I know God likes, God likes music. Do you know that? In heaven, they're always worshiping, right? God likes a concert once in a while. Not like those hornbill times, but you know, he likes loud worship because in heaven, the angels are shouting. They're not whispering. They're not nervous. They're shouting. The Bible says they're shouting. In fact, Isaiah, when he had the vision, he saw the cherubim in heaven. They were shouting, holy, holy, holy. They were not whispering. They were shouting. Because the glory of God inspires such awe from within us that we cannot help but shout when we see the glory of God. The angels are always seeing that and they are screaming. So God likes music. He says, sing a new song to me. The book of Psalms is all about prophecy and songs that come out from the very presence of God. So Paul and Silas are worshiping. And the worship that God loves most is worship in the middle of your pain. Worship in the middle of darkness. Worship when you don't know what is happening in your life, but yet by faith, you're willing to give thanks to the Lord. That's the worship that God loves because that is where your faith is tested. Anyone can sing when everything is going well. But it takes faith to sing when everything around you is dying. When everything around you is falling apart, even when the trees do not give their fruit, even when it's famine all around you, it takes faith to, from your heart, say, yet I will still praise God. That's what Paul and Silas were doing, and God loved it. You see, there's something about your worship that rises before the throne room of God. Praise and worship is like climbing the mountain. Your worship, your praise, climbs the mountain of God and then you come to a place in the midst of your worship where the presence of God comes and engages with you and there you are on that mountain like Moses was on the mountaintop with God where the glory of God envelops you and you have those encounter moments with God. So Paul and Silas's worship were ascending to heaven and maybe God heard it. God heard Paul and Silas saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God loved it. There was no music. There was no bass. There was no drums. There was no light. But it came from a pure heart of hunger and worship and praise. And that is what God loves above all. See, more than the lights and the music and everything else here, the most important instrument for your worship is your heart. Your heart. And so God loved it so much that he also began to, blessed be the name or blessed be my name or whatever. He was also flowing along with them and he was also tapping his feet to the beat of Paul and Silas' song and suddenly by mistake he tapped too hard. He tapped too hard that suddenly an earthquake came. And the prison where Paul and Silas were, was shaken from the foundations. And they were set free. Hallelujah. And amen. 
I've experienced so many times freedom from spiritual attacks, bondages, fear, when I learned to worship God in the middle of my, of my battle, in the middle of the struggle, in the middle of the fight. When I ignored the enemy, when I ignored my problems, when I ignored my crisis, and I lifted up the name of Jesus, it was almost as if God came and he fought my battles on my behalf. And I've literally experienced what Paul and Silas experienced literally hundreds of times. Not physically, yet very real. Very spectacularly here and here and then in my life. I've experienced moments when after times of worship, financial breakthrough came. After times of worship, I've experienced change in circumstances. After times of worship, I've experienced chains of depression and fear and guilt break off from my life. Not by fighting the depression, but by worshiping God. See, there was no way Paul and Silas could have set themselves free. And there was no point for them to fight that prison by their flesh. They only did what they knew what to do. What was that? Worship him, praise him. See, when you don't know what you do, I'm sorry, when you don't know what you should be doing, it's very simple, just worship God. Just give him thanks, just give him praise, and he will fight for you. Now we know this story. They were set free. The prisoners were set free. How many people were singing? Two. How many people got set free? Everyone in that prison. But the real freedom came to the jailer and his family who by seeing this miracle gave their lives to Christ and they experienced the true liberty of salvation. You see, worship is powerful in, the, in, the, in this manner that it is not only you who are blessed, but the people around your lives can also be blessed. And the people in the church that you are part of are also blessed. And not only that, the people in the land can also be blessed. You see, through your worship, your worship, your purity of devotion to God, it invites the presence of God not only into your life. There have been times when I've been in worship services and when I've seen the passion in which the worship was worshipped on stage, the presence of God touched me simply because I saw that that worshipper's heart and mind was so given completely to God, it inspired me and the presence of God upon them came and also ministered to me. I've experienced worship services where there are thousands of people in the congregation and everyone is dry, but one or two suddenly with all their heart begin to worship God and suddenly the presence of God comes and touches everyone. Why? See, two or three genuine hearted souls worshiping God can invite the presence of God to the point where everyone can experience the freedom of God. That's what happens in worship. That's why you don't have to be worried about who is worshiping, who is not worshiping. Are they really giving the whole heart to the Lord? You just focus on yourself and your heart with God. And if you will just worship, I tell you, you can be the instrument through which God sets some other people free tonight. I remember the first time I rented the church in Singapore where I gave my life to the Lord. It was a Baptist church, but they were having revival. And I walked into the church and I saw young people, 16 year old, 17 year old with ponytails and Bermuda shorts on a Sunday service. And they were dancing before the presence of the Lord and singing. And I could see such genuine joy on their faces that I was like, I want that. But when I went to church, I was bound. I was bound in sins, I was bound in my addictions, I was a drinker, I was a smoker, I was just a worldly man, but when I went to church, I saw the presence of God on somebody, they were genuinely worshiping God, and I said, I want that. Why? Dave, I'm sorry, Paul and Silas worshiped, the others were set free. I was set free because I saw 
genuine worship, passionate worship in somebody else's lives. Did you know that when you are a genuine worshiper, the freedom that you experience is not only for yourself. Soon your family will be touched. Your friends will be touched. The land will be touched. We don't have to have everyone in Nagaland here tonight to experience the presence of God and the blessing of God over Nagaland. We don't have to. If there is a remnant, because God has always worked with remnants. God has always worked with a seed. That's the principle of the kingdom. If there is a seed here tonight, and every tribe in Nagaland, every church here in Kohima is gathered here. Not every church, maybe 10 churches, 15 churches. It doesn't matter if there is a seed that God can work it. God can bless that seed. And our worship here tonight, our prayer here tonight, our intercession before the Lord for our land here tonight can release the presence of God over Nagaland and the people will experience the blessing and the freedom of God. Amen. Are you sure, Pastor? I'm absolutely sure. 100% sure. See, what is worship? Worship is giving to the heavens. It's sowing to the heavens. Worship is prayer and intercession together angels literally i'm telling you this is the truth 100 percent guaranteed truth all right i know it that's why i'm telling you i'm paid to know these things <laughs> all right angels are literally gathered to take your prayers and your intercessions do you know that they wait upon the body of Christ that when the body of Christ is there in the book of Revelations. Then the body of Christ prays. The prayers of the saints are collected by the angels and they're collected into a bowl. A bowl. A bowl of incense. It's up in heaven. And then when the bowl of incense is full, do you know that heaven from the bowl releases back to the earth? Fire, glory, lightning. I'm not lying. It's the truth. But the thing is this. When you pray, it's not that God always releases back to you. So you pray here, God takes your prayers, and He releases that bolt of lightning on Nepal. God releases that bolt of lightning. By lightning, we don't mean always judgment, all right? I'm talking about the lightnings of God. Power, grace, blessing, breakthrough over Myanmar over Hebron. Which Hebron, Pastor? Use your imagination. <laughs> Amen. See, we can pray. And when we pray, when we lift up our intercessions, God, it's like we're soaring to the heavens. We are soaring. We are giving seed to the heaven. We are giving seed to the heavens. So every word of praise to Jesus, hallelujah, just imagine that it's a seed that is going up to the heavens. Don't underestimate the power of your words. Don't underestimate your little phrases. Don't think that the, the, the worship leader, his, his worship is the most important. It is not. All of us. I love worship services where the worship of the congregation is louder than the stage. If the stage is louder, I always know there's a problem here. People are just being entertained. They're not worshiping. The stage should never be louder than the congregation. Amen. We soar to the heavens. And when we soar to the heavens, the angels collect it and then they release back to the earth. The harvest of your worship and intercession need not be experienced by you personally, but some other place, some other church, some other people, Dimapu, in the villages, in Mokokchung, they can experience the grace and the blessing of God, and there will be souls that are saved, families that come back to the Lord, 
people that are filled with the Spirit of God, revival that breaks forth in Arunachal, in Manipur. That's the way the kingdom of God works. We're here to bless Nagaland tonight, to pray for the unity, to believe that even today is an important moment of God's visitation, that from this day forth, we will see a greater blessing of God upon Nagaland. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come, let's worship the Lord. Let me show you the scripture. Revelations 8, verse 4. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Now, when you see that, you may be thinking, literal earthquake, thunderings. No, no, no. This is spiritual language. The majority of the book of Revelations is spiritual language. So when there is a spiritual shaking, it's referring to what we call revival. What we call a sudden harvest in an entire nation. A shaking in a nation that brings the nation to its knees and before the Lord. We're not talking about literal earthquakes, literal calamities. We're talking about what God would do on the earth because of our prayers and intercessions. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys have communion? We have a communion, right? No. Communion. Are you guys having communion? It was written there, new wine. It's a song. Okay. All right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're going to have the new wine. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Why don't we stand to our feet? Feel free to come to the front. Oh, thank you, Lord. Especially if you're bound in any way, fear. Especially if you're bound in any way. Even timidity is a bondage. Insecurity. Sin, addictions, whatever it may be. Be the loudest tonight. You see, God is not judging you and condemning you, telling you you are not worthy to take my name because you drink. You are not worthy to praise me because you are imperfect. No. The blind man, Bartimaeus, he was the loudest. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And everyone around him said, be quiet, be quiet. But he became louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. You see, it's when you are bound. It's when you are in a difficulty. When you are in a crisis. That's the very moment you need to be louder. Because that's the very time God wants to meet with you. God wants to touch you. But many times we think that because of my sins, I am disqualified from God's grace. Because of my imperfections, I am not worthy to be in His presence. Do you know that your very disqualifications qualify you? Your very imperfections are what God wants to come and touch. Do you know that your weakness attracts the grace of God? Jesus is a doctor. He likes sick people. <laughs> Anybody sick? 
in your heart and mind your physician is here some come everyone come at the back those people come come one two three come 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 hallelujah let's go just worship Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise
before I hand it over the team for the rest of the evening, I just saw this picture and I just want to be obedient to the Spirit. If you say here tonight that you are bound in something and you need freedom, you need to be set free, would you raise your hands? Would you just raise your hands? At the back also. Would you just take a couple of steps to the front? Those of you who have raised your hands and the rest can kindly make way for them. If you say that you need freedom in your life and you've raised your hand, come to the front, come, come. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Whatever it may be. I know you're born again, you love God, but you're still bound in some areas of your life. Feel free to come. People at the back, feel free. All right, just for everyone to recognize the ones who are here in the front and you need freedom, would you raise your hands again? Okay. All right. The rest of you, I want you to look at these people because I want you to go and surround them and lay hands upon them and worship God. And just worship God. Just worship. Don't pray for them. Just worship God over their lives. And the ones that have their hands raised, I want you to worship God with all your heart. I want you to know God loves you. He's not condemning you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you have the freedom to worship God right now. So the rest of you, can you please come and lay your hands upon this. Come, 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 come. Just come, come. Come to the front also. I need some people up here in the front. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Just lay your hands on these that have the hands raised. Keep your hands raised. Keep your hands raised. Come. The rest of you, please, please go and lay hands upon them. Come, come. Just go and touch them. Hallelujah. Go and just lay hands upon them. Hallelujah, that have the hands raised. Come on, just worship God. Just worship God. Just worship God over them. Sing over them. Sing. Sing songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. Sing songs of deliverance over them. Hallelujah. I love the King and the King loves me. I bless you. I bless you.
release hope over your people. I release freedom into the hearts that are bound, O Lord. Father, I just release the love of God, the grace of God. Every heart that is filled with guilt and shame. Father, I thank that there is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And I just release your love, your forgiveness, your grace, even as they believe in you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that fear will come tumbling down. Depression will leave. Anxiety will cease in Jesus' name. I speak freedom to every person here tonight. Every chains of darkness be broken in Jesus' mighty name.
Here's where the dead things come back to me. I feel my heart beating again. Here's where the dead things come back to me.
restoring you He's rebuilding you Here and now in this place Here and now in this place Can we just sing it out one more time? You are closer straight to his heart and you are here's where the dead things here's where the dead things come back to live I feel I feel my heart oh isn't it beating loud and strong here's where come on let your heart If you are free, can you all sing it out loud and strong? Here's where, here's where I sense that there's such readiness, there's such a readiness in your heart. For those of you who are still here, I don't want you to miss this moment. God wants to pour out new desire for life, new passion, new dream, new perspective, new wine into this new wine skin. Stay back as long as you need to. Your heart knows, your heart knows. Do not be conscious about the environment, the surrounding, the time, but be here as long as you need to be here. And I want you to take this opportunity. This is something fresh that God wants to pour into your life tonight because you are ready, because you are ready. He's a God of abundance. He's a God of overflow. He's a God of new things. Receive it, receive it, receive it. New wine, new wine, new wine. Find a new joy, new freedom, life that you've never experienced before. This is the moment. This is the moment. Know who you are. Stand strong. Know your identity. Be confident of who you are in Christ Jesus. Know who, who you are and whose you are. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Ready, God. Ready. Thank you, Lord. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you and to your careful hand when I try
the soil lie down surrender you are breaking new ground yes <laughs> hey you are breaking new ground so make me your vessel make me an offering to be
tonight we have some of our friends, pastor friends from um, different churches. <clears throat> of course, not many of them, but two of them are going to come up and take some time. And so I would like to just give time to you know, Pastor Zajamo and uh, Pastor Visato, yeah, if you can just come and take your time. I just want to take this short while to lead us in a time of prayer for our land. <clears throat> I think one of the most beautiful things that musical worship does to us is that it, it refreshes your soul <clears throat> and it, it, it unites people. And I want to thank Pastor Sean for that powerful word this evening <clears throat> where he talked about worship uniting people. And as I was thinking oh, how to take this time that's been given to me, I felt God uh, asking me to lead all of us into a time of prayer for the healing of our land. I love the fact that tonight's gathering is not just about worship, but united worship. Amen? Worship unites people. And tonight is about united worship. Most of us think that prayer or intercession is for older people. But tonight, as young people, as we are gathered here in this manner, I want to encourage us to pray for our land. Psalm 86, 9 says, All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and they shall glorify your name. The will of God is that all nations, all people shall come to God and that they would glorify God together as one. I'm also reminded of that verse in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And as I was thinking of praying for our land, tonight praying for Nagaland, I was thinking to myself, if there's one time in history where Christians need to stand together, irrespective of our denominations, irrespective of our associations, irrespective of our organizations, it is now. And I want to thank Pastor Sean again for reminding us of the fact that as Christians, we are to look beyond our affiliations, beyond our denominations, beyond our differences. And tonight we want to pray for that. The gospel of God brings about two new relationships. We are united with God and we are united with people. We are united with God and we are united with each other. And tonight we want to pray that God would unite our people together. You know, we sometimes forget that the church has been established by God. God established the church. But denominations, affiliations are man-made. And it saddens me sometimes as someone in ministry that I see Christians divided among ourselves, our own people, so-called Christians, divided among ourselves. We seem to be so focused on our differences and not on our unity, the similarities that we share as children of God. We know about the recent unfortunate incident that happened in our land, in Perrin District, that got three of our brothers killed and two vehicles burned. We are at a time where we are divided across tribal lines. And what a time to be reminded tonight of the spirit of unity and to pray for unity and healing of our land. Amen. The devil is trying to divide us from within and not necessarily from without. And I think the reason for our division is mostly pride. 
who are so focused on ourselves that we don't have time to look up to God and realize that we are all one in Christ. We keep focusing on ourselves and we magnify our differences. And, they, and, and the more we magnify our differences, they seem bigger and bigger. So let's, as we pray, let's pray for humility. Jesus prayed that his followers would be one as he and his fathers and his father are one. And Jesus said it is our oneness that will also convince the world that God sent him to us and that God loves us. His community here on earth. So as we, as I lead us in a time of prayer, corporate prayer, not just me praying, but all of us praying for the healing of our land, for our people to come together. I want to read John 17, 20 to 23. I ask not only on behalf of these, that's the disciples, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that is us, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. That they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I want to encourage us. Go ahead and pray. If there's specific points that God's laying in your heart tonight, as you think about Nagaland, as you think about our people, as you think about our churches, as you think about denominations, as you think about associations, as you think about the situation that our people, that our land is going through right now, if there's specific, specific points that God wants you to pray for, please go ahead and do that. I want to open time for all of us gathered here tonight to participate in prayer for healing of Nagaland and God to unite our people together. So let's pray together. Go ahead wherever you are sitting, wherever you are standing, go ahead, raise your voices tonight and pray for God to heal our land, to unite our people as one, just as He is one. Go ahead. God has given us this responsibility tonight to pray for our land and our people to be united. Yes, Lord. Help our people to grow together in unity. Tonight, as we worship in oneness and unity, we pray that you would take this unity and unison outside of this group, Lord. Take it to our churches. Take it to our communities, Lord. Take it to our villages. Take it to our towns. and Take it, take it to our cities. Take it to our villages. Lord, I pray tonight we pray tonight believing in your word that says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face you said in your word then I will hear from heaven I will forgive them and I will heal their land I pray that tonight you would heal our land unite our people encourage our people Lord to put aside our differences so that we can effectively praise you with one mind with one heart, Lord. Lord, release your overflowing grace and your anointing upon all people here in Nagaland, upon all tribes, upon all churches, upon all denominations, upon all villages, upon all towns, Lord. As we make significant efforts to promote your name in love tonight, Lord. Bless our families, that our families would be one in Christ. Bless our communities, that we would come together that we would see beyond our differences, that we would be united in our heart. Bless our tribes. Bless our state, Lord. Bless our church leaders. Bless our political leaders. Bless our religious leaders, Lord. Tonight, Lord, believing in your word that says you will hear from heaven and you will heal our land. We pray and ask you, Lord, to unite our people together. Forgive us, Lord, for those times when we have focused so much on our differences and we have been overcome with pride. Lord, but tonight, 
believing believing that you want to take unity beyond this venue lord we pray that you would unite our people unite our land heal our land lord lord we ask you to forgive us forgive us of our sins forgive us lord for we have been so divided among ourselves but lord we thank you for this opportunity tonight that in worship you have united us as one lord tonight we represent different tribes tonight as we come together we represent different churches tonight lord as we gather here in this manner we represent different communities different denominations different groups of people but just like you have united us in worship tonight i pray that you would unite our people heal our people and heal our land and so lord we take this time tonight to pray over our land asking you lord to be gracious to us help us lord that we would set aside our differences so that we can effectively worship you together release your overflowing grace and your anointing over all our brothers and sisters across our state that we would be able to make significant efforts to promote your name to love one another to be united in Christ so that is our prayer lord bless our families bless our communities bless our tribes bless our state bless our leaders lord and so lord tonight we pray this prayer of unity and oneness over our land thank you jesus thank you jesus Lord, you know our hearts. You know our hearts, Lord. You see us tonight. And as we have prayed together, we pray that you would hear us from heaven and you would heal our land. And Lord, even as we continue to worship, Be with us, refresh us, unite us in your love. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, but uh, maybe a little quieter. And uh, I'm sure you desire to see uh, our land being filled by peace of God, right? You want to see our land being healed. Now, there was a, there's a city that had very strong walls, I tell you. And uh, the wall still stands today. I, I was privileged to see it. Still standing very strong, even though it's thousands of years old. But there was a time when the people of God, uh, they disobeyed. And God allowed the wall to become weak. And uh, enemies came and invaded. And I'm talking about the city of Jerusalem. And I tell you, not even a stone was standing on the wall. It was broken. But the thing is, without any of the missionaries' technologies that we see today, uh, God put up the wall back again in 52 days. Do you know that? 52 days, right? And you know who God used? People like you and me, Hallelujah. right? Without missions. And that's the story of Nehemiah, okay? Nehemiah answered the call of God, and he was broken in seeing the walls being torn down. And it says, Lord, this is your city, this is your land, this is your, these are your people. I, I need to see this wall being rebuilt again. All right? Society being rebuilt again. Religious spirituality, true spiritual being rebuilt again. The word, the worship being rebuilt again. And God said, you know what? It's your duty. All right? It's your duty. So he responded to the call of God. 
And he went back, he heard the call of God and he just asked God to uh, open his eyes and he, he checked out the place. He investigated, you know, what needs to be done. He rallied people and he created a huge movement, just like this, Taliang's movement, right? Amazing. But before that, he was broken and said, Lord, I'm going to intercede for the sins of my people. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. And one thing I recognize about Nehemiah the prophet and Moses, he didn't say, Lord, forgive them, heal their land. He said, forgive my sins as well. He's one with the sins, okay? So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare and give you a call of Nehemiah upon us because that's what is needed today. People who respond to the call of God and do the impossible thing. Because now I'm going to tell you it's impossible to rebuild ourselves. It's impossible, but God can do it, right? But we, God needs Nehemiah's today, right? So we're going to quiet our hearts. And before we, great, what Sato prayed is great. I'm, I'm thankful that I'm going to follow his prayer. And that is our dream. That's our vision. That's our prayer. But the change, the rebuilding starts with my heart. Okay? It's going to start with our heart. And so I'm going to ask you to pause before the presence of God. And say, so, Lord... I'm here because of the sins of my people. The sins of this land is my sin as well. Father, forgive our sins. Forgive the sin of my neighbor. Forgive the sin of my father, my brother, my sister. And forgive my sin because that's my sin as well. So I'm going to give you a time now to just come before God and ask God to convict you of the sin that we see around us of the killings injustice of discrimination and i tell you we are very very racist as well so ask god to forgive us of this sin of our lack of righteousness of the shallowness lack of depth of spirituality Ask God to give you a heart of Nehemiah. A heart that is convicted of all the things that are in mess. Because if you're okay with the mess, you're okay with it. You don't need to rebuild it. But ask God to give you a heart that is broken but what breaks the heart of God. A heart that would fast and pray. Ask God for a heart that will intercede. Big things happen because we prayed. I want you to ask God to give you a mind of Nehemiah. A mind that sees clearly the things that the way they are. That is able to see with the wisdom of God and see answers, not just problems. Ask God to give you a mind like Nehemiah's. But I'm not talking about the mind of man. I'm talking about a mind that is after Christ. That is renewed, cleansed, and have the mind of Christ seated where He is. Father, Lord, we pray for your mind, O God, upon us. Renew our minds. Help us to see clearly, O Lord. Father, our minds are clouded by distractions. We're not able to see what you see, oh God. Help us to see where it's, it needs to be fixed, oh God. Help us to see the brokenness of people. Help us to see the pain of people. Help us to see the hungry, oh Lord. Help us to see the lost, the thirsty, oh God. Help us to see the good things that you're doing in our land. We are full of negativism. People are angry against church. People don't see the hand of God. But I tell you, we are blessed. Our land is blessed. We are talented, we are gifted. God feeds the birds of the air every single day. And we have never been neglected, I tell you. Help us, O oh Lord. Give us a clarity, O oh God, in our mind. To discern 
when you're working and they praise you when you're working oh god but give us a mind when we're at work and stop you from working as well give us a sensitivity lord in our in our minds and our hearts And I want you to intercede via prayer, men and women, young men and women like Nehemiah, but with a spirit that sees what it should be. I want your spirit to see hope. And that is why we pray, right? Because our spirit has faith and we see what should be in God, in Jesus. So, Father Lord, I just pray that our spirits would recognize O oh lord and see the hope all the blessings that you have prepared for those who love you O oh lord help us to pray not as people without hope O oh god help us to fight and to battle because O oh lord all impossible things are possible in christ O oh lord and the walls can be built up O oh lord in days unimaginable to men in ways impossible to men O oh lord Lastly, I'm going to make something very personal. Practically speaking, you do know how uh, Nehemiah and the people of God build the wall. Very, God is very humorous as well. He asks the children, all the families, the tribes and the clans to start building the wall next to the houses. It's, it's very, very funny. And all of them came together tribe clan wise the family wise and they start building the wall that is just next to the house so i'm going to ask you to say lord start rebuilding our nation from my family from my workplace from my life from my relationship with my brothers my siblings my my parents my colleagues my classmates and if you cannot change that i tell you god has no other way we bypass something that God expects us to do is that we become Nehemiahs around the people amongst the people around us so I want to draw you to your tiny little world the tiny little wall next to you next to your family next to your workplace and I tell you if only we see the greatness in the little things that God has placed us in God will do great, great things, big things, I tell you. So I'm going to ask you something very personal. Are the walls of your personal lives broken down? Are the walls in your family broken down? Start praying for that. Can we just be open before God, naked before Him, come as we are? Because I tell you, without the grace of God, we are all broken people. We're all sinners but thank God has chosen us and it begins his work right where we are right where we stand right where we work can you start mending relationship if there's anyone here that is not in right terms with his brother or sister mom and dad can you just ask for God's grace for repentance and the courage to mend the wall between your siblings, between you and your dad, mom, let's pray together. Father, Lord, yes. The temple priests, God used goldsmiths, businessmen, masons, housewives, farmers, musicians, all of them to build the city of God. So if there is something broken in your tiny little world of your workplace, in your classroom, and you know things are not right 
Would you be a Nehemiah there? To stand for God, for righteousness, for purity, for faith? Ask God for the grace and the power of God right now to help you do the work, the good work that you have been saved for. Your workmanship of Christ. Saved by grace, through faith, for good works. Let's pray together. Father, empower us, Lord. God, I just pray, Father, that you would. Father, as we want to see peace in this land, let there be peace in every home. I pray especially for these brothers and sisters here standing before you, kneeling before you, sitting down, O God. Let the peace of Christ dwell richly in the houses, in the homes, wherever they are, Father. I pray for the mighty power of God and the cross, O Lord, to be manifest in their own lives. Father, if there's any broken walls in the homes, families, I pray, Father, for reconciliation I pray for forgiveness I pray for uh, renewed relationships renewed love oh God renewed commitments of oh Father amongst their siblings amongst our family members relatives our own people our tribe the others neighbors of oh Father Father I pray Lord that you give us the eyes to see that what we have in our hands our giftings the, the places they have placed us in, wherever we are, Lord, that is where we can be Nehemiah's, oh God, to start building our land. So, Father, Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you raise up prophets like Nehemiah today, oh God, in this generation, especially here, Lord, from here on, in this place, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord, that you would see us as your child, as your ambassador, as your warrior, O oh God, and use us, O oh Lord. And we have been empowered every good spiritual blessings that's available for godliness and righteousness. So, Father, may we go out, O oh Lord, where you have called us, O oh Lord, and start doing your work. Oh Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that one day, O oh God, we'll look back at moments like this and we'll say, Thank you, Lord. I've heard your call, I've responded, I've obeyed you. And thank you for blessing in it. Thank you, Father, Lord. Use us. We give you praise right now. Because if you, have, if you can use man like Moses and Nehemiah you can use a man like me as well not by my mind but by yours oh God by your power in Jesus name Amen Amen in just about 10 minutes.
take a few seconds uh, to acknowledge our, our partners here. Uh, big thanks to um, Nirmal uh, Ningule for the generator, for the support, um, Aviku for the lights, um, Highland Dawn Media, Udiwa Wang for the media, uh, just everything, the LED screen, just this wonderful uh, experience that we're having. And Yevesa, out loud, thank you very much for this awesome sound. Uh, and Apu for the generator, of course. And uh, I also have something special to announce. Uh, three groups have come together <laughs> to offer the best possible package in terms of doing events. And that is, um, Udi, can you just project? Uh, is it, it's already, uh, okay, so. Out Loud, Highland on Media, and of course, Headlight. Yeah, so audio, lights, and LED screen with media. So total package, like tonight's concert, available in smaller or bigger sizes for live events, church camps, youth retreats, and concerts for all churches. And 
colleges, colleges of Kohima. So let's give it up for all these wonderful people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Please contact these wonderful people if ever you plan to organize any event in the future. And so we want to do one thing. We'll sing one song for the last time. And it's a brand new song. And we're a little nervous, but we want to just release this song over all of you. It's called Jubilee. And for which maybe you can just stand. Is that okay? You can stand. Yeah, so we'll close in maybe five to ten minutes. I think I lied a little bit earlier. <laughs> so it's, just, it's going to go beyond ten minutes. So five to ten minutes, we're done. Okay, so let's do this song, Jubilee. And right after this, I want to, you know, invite all of you to have a cup of tea and maybe some snacks. I don't know if they have, but <laughs> tea for sure, all right? And, you know, uh, it's prepared by uh, our, our Chakisang Baptist Church friends. So thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. And my wife wants to share something. <laughs> yeah. Just quickly. Um, so the past few months, okay, um, as uh, you know, um, our, our team, we have been visiting, you know, uh, some families and uh, pastors and so on. So every time we go to uh, the families, what we do is, you know, we take some gifts for them, okay, which the Lord had instructed us to do. And one of, in one of the, you know, one of the gifts is like a set of eggs, okay, andana. So for a long time, okay, all of us, we have been wondering what is the meaning of the eggs, okay. The other two gifts, like we, we know what it means, we are sure of that. But the third gift, which is a set of eggs, like we... Like we really didn't know and we always would, you know, have fun, like, you know, inter you know, like ask God, you know, what this would mean and, you know, we would just laugh it off. But tonight, as we were sitting here, you know, my daughter, um, she's really prophetic, okay, <laughs> in her silly ways and in her sweet ways. So she showed me up, you know, uh, on the ceiling and the lights were like, you know, um, shining up there and then they really did look like eggs. Like, I don't know if the light people can do that again. <laughs> so there were so many eggs okay, in the shape of an egg. And then she was like, Mama, these are eggs. These are eggs. And suddenly the Spirit of the Lord, you know, reminded me of the eggs that, you know, we would take to the homes of these pastors and, you know, um, people that we would be instructed to go to. And so I got really excited. And so I quickly asked her, like, oh, really? Yeah. Like, what, what is God telling you? You know, what are these eggs? What are these eggs? And you know what she told me? <laughs> Do you want to hear that? Yes. In her, <laughs> yeah, Niall too. She said, um, what you see will hatch. What you see will hatch. And that blew me away. Amen. Yes, just give it up for God. Let's give it up for God. What we want to see for our land, what we want to see for our family, what we want to see for ourselves, it will come to life, okay? And it's not our doing, it is God, it is God. And so, everything is in motion, you know, God has set everything in motion and we are on the victory side. Definitely, definitely, victory is ours. And new dreams, new visions, old dreams, doesn't matter. It's gonna hatch. What you see will hatch, so be careful what you see. It's also a reminder, you know? Be careful what you see. See the good things. Prophesy good things. Speak life. And you will see that come to pass. So yeah, let's jubilee. <laughs> let's jubilee. Yeah. So this is a mandate from the Lord over all of you. You know, just walk confidently with courage, with boldness. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you to set the captives free, to preach the good news. Go ahead, go ahead. Even as you leave this place and do what God wants you to do. Look 
look out for the woman shouting his garment made me clean listen up for the seasons changing he is rebuilding everything listen for the people shouting this is jubilee this is jubilee
stretch our hands we are called not to curse but to bless so let's bless each other before we leave this place with a simple chorus that we all know the Lord bless you
Father, we thank you. You are good. You are faithful. What you have started, you will finish it. Yes. You can be trusted at all times. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for honoring us with your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much.